I also wanted to just mention over at that safety trailer demonstration, we have a very dedicated group of linemen that work at the Summit Line Shop. And the supervisor was born and raised in Morristown. His mom works at the Assumption School as a teacher for the last 30 years. So again, it's like we are part of your community. We're not just here to address something when it happens. And that's just by way of background. So on August 29th, as Ms. Barrick said, we met um, your planner, Phil Abramson, also came. And we met with our team of external affairs, engineering, and operations to address what happened on August 5th, particularly. I know your mayor wanted to come and wasn't able to, but we could move in communication about it. So tonight, this is what you wanted to hear about, which was the incident that occurred. And um, I know that it was particularly concerning to you because of safety reasons. There's the reliability, and it is not fun when your residents are out of power, and we all know what that is like. But when there's a safety concern, as there was with the manhole cover, that's when the alarm bells really are, are you know, up. And um, I want you to know that your administrator and mayor and I and Chief Lanigan are always on the phone. We'll, we'll stay on the phone for as long as it takes. I try to give them as much information as I have. Um, you know, I'm calling the dispatch center and we're always all in communi constant communication. This one was a little bit trickier because when there's cable faults, we don't always know the source. What we're doing is we're concentrating on safely repairing them, uh, the prop, the issues, getting everybody restored. And uh, so what we do know is that there were two cable faults that occurred on that day. Um, they were out of the Marstown substation, circuit 37855, and circuit 37934. Um, I wanted to share with you that they were not part of the underground network. I think you're all familiar with the network and then that's outside of the network. The faults occurred, one at Lafayette Street in Morris, and the other was uh, on Speedwell Avenue by the CVS. Uh, subsequently, we evaluated the cable for quality control purposes to see if there were any error in workmanship, was any error in workmanship. And it was determined, uh, we got the results that there was no error in workmanship. Um, the splices were in fact done correctly. So, um, you know, apart from that, there is no official determination of what caused those faults um, other than degradation of insulation, which we don't know exactly what that, what caused that. Um, after the evaluation. Um, I will tell you that the JCPNL team of operations and engineering then assessed the situation and we have an action plan. And here are the, here's the plan to make improvements to make this a safer situation. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is reconfigure the circuit breakers to operate more quickly in the event of a fall on the underground portion of the circuit. The second thing we're going to do is to uh, block the circuit block the circuit breaker from automatically reclosing in. The third thing that we're going to do is to install new manhole covers that are vented, um, and we're strategically placing those manhole covers. So those are the three action plans that we uh, intend to, to take to address this situation. I also wanted to let you know that we do have preventative maintenance programs. We're not always looking backwards, we're looking forwards. Um, some of these don't have anything to do with the cables, but just in terms of your reliability, we inspect the circuits every five years and we evaluate whether equipment needs to be uh, repaired. And uh, there is work going on in Marshtown right now to replace poles, to replace a transformer. Uh, we're gonna be doing a project to replace underground, what they're called crabs. Um, we inspect our poles every 10 years. We also do infrared scans, or it's called thermography. And uh, we do that on a four-year cycle, and we use infrared cameras, which detect issues that are not visible to the eye. Um, these circuits are prioritized, and the issues are mitigated proactively. We do vegetative management. I'm sure you've seen the trucks all over. We do that on a four-year cycle on all of our circuits. Um, and we also are doing increased vegetative, vegetative man management through our IIP program. That's an enhanced reliability program we received $97 million approval from the DPU to do these enhancements. And I will tell you that everything, all of that work has been done in Morristown um, on the convent within the Morristown substations. Um, I also want to tell you that we evaluate our worst performing circuits and we uh, address their overall performance and we, we add or replace equipment as needed and do supplemental tree trimming where that would be useful. Um, finally, before I take your questions, I wanted to just end with uh, some resources for all of you that I hope you take advantage of and your residents take advantage of, and that is our website. There's a wealth of information on there. If you go to our, our website, there is a section called My Towns, 
and if you click on it, you can get to Morristown. And there you will find a lot of information. You will find out how many substations, how many circuits. You'll find out that you have 1,402 utility poles, 33 miles of distribution lines, and 11,000 customers in Morristown. So I think that's good information. Um, in addition, it tells you how to um, report any kind of service issue that needs to be repaired, and also how to report your outage. So important that every single resident or customer reports their outage because we don't have that automatic um, yet. We hope to someday, we'd love to have that. But really, we go by the call-ins, and it helps our crew to know where the problem is. Because when they, if they come out here and they're looking for the fault, if they see a cluster of, of customers who have called in, it helps them identify it more quickly. Um, so we also want to encourage everyone, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we watch that stuff. We're following it. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get to see what the comments are from the residents and what the, uh, what the concerns are. So that is uh, what I wanted to share with you, but I know that you do still have some concerns and questions that you might have for us. I think we might have missed the website.